Zips can be found on clothing, on bags, even on footwear. The zipper started out as a newfangled closure mechanism for boots and tobacco pouches. The fashion industry didn't put them on clothing until the 1930s, some 80 years after the invention of this fastener. An American, Elias Howe, was the first to patent a zipper-like clothing fastener in 1851, but he never ended up marketing it. It wasn't until 1893 that another American, Whitcomb Judson, designed a similar device called a clasp locker. He eventually hired a Canadian engineer, Gideon Sundback, to simplify the original complex design, which had never really taken off. In 1917, Judson and Sundback patented the modern zipper. A zip's teeth are made of either metal, plastic or nylon. The fabric part of the zipper is called the tape. It's usually polyester, but sometimes cotton or a fireproof fabric. To make metal zippers, the factory feeds a long continuous roll of tape onto what's called the teeth machine, along with a roll of metal ribbon known as flat wire. As we see here in slow motion, the machine cuts off a tiny piece of flat wire, forces it through a die that forms it into a tooth shape then clamps it onto the edge of one side of the tape. The machine does all this at a rate of 45 teeth per second. These zipper teeth are aluminium. Sturdier zippers are made of stronger metals, such as brass and nickel. Depending on the model, teeth can range in width from about 3 to 10 millimeters. The wider the teeth, the thicker they have to be. Workers now feed two tapes with metal teeth into what's called the joining machine. The teeth interlock, meshing the two halves of what's now a continuous zip. From there it's onto a cleaning machine, which first washes the zip, removing any shards of metal left behind by the tooth cutting process. After drying the zipper, the machine applies a coat of hot wax. This lubricates the teeth, so the slider will glide over them smoothly. Next stop is the gapping machine. This removes a 4 cm long section of the teeth at regular intervals. They'll later cut the tape at these gaps, dividing the continuous zipper into several shorter zippers. There are two main types of zips. Firstly, the closed end zip. These are the kind whose two halves don't separate at the bottom when opened. These need a part called a bottom stop a thick piece of flat wire positioned at the base of the zipper. When you unzip, it stops the slider and prevents the two halves from separating. The other model is the open end zip, the kind whose two halves do separate at the bottom when opened, which go on jackets, for example. At the bottom end of these zippers, a machine applies a clear reinforcement strip. This stiffens the tape so that the next machine can apply the pin and box. The pin is the vertical piece of metal on one half of the zipper that has to be aligned in the box on the other half before you can pull the slider to zip up. The next machine installs the slider. In slow motion, we can see as it opens each gap and hooks a slider onto the track of teeth. The next machine inserts what's called the top stop a thick piece of flat wire that stops the slider at the top of the track when you zip up all the way. The machine then slices the tape at each gap, separating the finished zippers. Plastic zips are made quite differently from metal ones. The tape is the same, but the teeth are made from plastic pellets. A machine melts them, then injects the liquid plastic into a mold that's the shape of a strip of zipper teeth. The mold cools almost instantly, hardening the plastic. The machine then stamps the teeth onto the tape, automatically gapping the desired zip length 
at the same time. The excess plastic in the middle is remelted. There's no joining machine to mesh the two halves of plastic zips. Workers do this manually, so that they can inspect the plastic teeth to make sure they're well formed. Then, automated machines install the remaining components.